Hello. Hi, Thomas. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's uh, midnight here. I'm half sleepy, but uh, I thought I would join, which is marvelous. Well, all we're going to do today is your, your interview with David yesterday. So you'll get a week. Yes, yes, yes. With him. <laughs> yes, yes. Amazing. Amazing. Right. Thank you for jumping in, waking up in the middle of your <laughs> rest. <laughs> it's so hot here, so it's hard to actually sleep, really. It's hot here, too. Uh, oh. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, thank you. Thank you for, for putting, I got an email and I thought, oh, yeah, I, I've got some David's music. I want to learn more. <laughs> um, yes, and Miguel is... Hi, Miguel. Welcome. So today is kind of a unique uh, webinar. David's not here himself. It's just me. Um, but I'm okay, too. And um, in, in what I'm about to play for you, David actually interviews a gentleman who's here with us right now. His name's Thomas Mueller. And I'll interview, tell you more about him. And then maybe after we do our webinar, Maybe if you have any questions for Thomas, he can help you out too. I will make the disclaimer here though, that um, all of David Sarita products are, are not, not meant to compete with the medical establishments in any way. Um, you know, if you have a, a situation that's health related, please uh, consider your medical physician. Thank you so much, Ayuras, for organizing this. Oh. Sure, always my pleasure. Definitely linked to the internet connection at the Prius. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know how to fix that, guys. Perhaps we'll I'll just have to come down. <laughs> is um, rather than me play this, since Thomas is here, would you mind um, taking some questions and answering some questions? Um, can everyone hear me and Thomas today? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. It's how, good. How do you feel about that, Thomas? Yeah, that's all right. As long as I can stay off camera, I'm in bed already, which is quite sweet to know that I'm in bed and connected with the other side of the world. No, no worries. Um, <laughs> we'll keep you off and I'll stay on because I'm not. And um, we'll just take Q&As from everyone. I'll answer what I can. Maybe you can answer um, some as well. So basically what this interview was, was a dialogue between David Sarita, uh, Thomas, Thomas Mueller, and, and uh, Shamim Daya. Shamim Daya is the in UK right now, um, David Sarita Lightstream Products. And she um, managed to introduce the, the mantra coil to Thomas. And while Thomas had some, some great fun and some fun, Experiences and learn some uh, things working with his coil. And if I may also add, uh, working with the coil. And um, therefore, um, we decided that it was it would be good to interview Tom. David basically interviewed Thomas. And this is a dialogue back and forth between Thomas and David about his experience with the technology. So maybe what I'll do here is maybe let Thomas talk a little bit about how he um, was introduced to the technology and what his um, experience was. Thomas? Yes. Okay, so um, basically for those who don't know me, I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner uh, based here in London and it all started with the lockdown in the middle of March when my clinic uh, had to close down and also the clinic of Dr. Daya, who was a colleague of mine, who actually had been using the technology of David Sarita uh, for quite a while. And um, 
so she offered me she said look i have to close the clinic and would you like to make use of the mantra coil which basically um i totally embraced because uh, it was a very good opportunity for me to get to um, use the technology at my home and see how i feel about it so basically i have been in the field of uh, energetic healing and quantum frequency healing for many many years and um, uh, i have done another interview with sharers um, today this afternoon um, and basically throughout my 30 years of career i always felt from the very beginning that frequencies play an important part and an important role in healing and well-being be it through the use of mantras because mantras are also frequencies or being the use of essential oils so i was then um, lucky enough to take the mantra coil home and play it in my own home with certain frequencies and it was quite fascinating and really i would encourage you if you get the chance maybe go later to the website and listen to the interview um, because i had not necessarily an intellectual knowledge completely of what the frequencies that are being run through this uh, copper coil were actually doing um, I had an idea, but actually in the interview, I described uh, to David what I experienced. So ex for example, which part of the brain I felt activated with which of the frequencies. And that was um, pretty much the starting point of the conversation that we had. So basically I had the mantra coil here at home for the past four months and working it with myself um, and also using it for my quantum healing, energetic healings that I do remotely uh, for people around the globe. So, yeah, that was my introduction to, to the coil. So, Thomas, you mentioned how, how it, you could experience how it ex affects different parts of your brain. Now, uh, an ordinary person, <laughs> if I may use the terms, would find it difficult to recognize when a certain part of the brain is being affected. So tell us a little bit about how that was so different for you. Um, it was different from the perspective that usually when I go into meditation, and again, I have been meditating for many, many years and working a lot on, on my own personal growth. So usually, when I go into a state of meditation and relaxation, I can easily sense that um, I, I feel the energy in my physical body. I feel uh, basically that my body starts to, to become lighter. And I think anybody who has experiences in meditation has these experiences on and off. And, um, but with the mantra call, it was almost like it it went straight to balancing and bringing back coherence in the right and the left hemisphere of the brain so basically between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system it was much quicker than actually when i was sitting there just with uh, using the frequency of my own mantra and working with the mantra meditation as an example so the sensation was or, or some of the key points where that I got into a state of transcending or meditation much quicker. The intensity of the sensation that actually we are not a physical body. We are just a physical body that, um, uh, or a spirit body that occupies this physical three-dimensional dense reality of our physical being. So, Thomas, I'm getting a question here already from uh, one of our attendees, Andrew. Um, and he's asking, what frequencies did Thomas use when he felt this way? Um, 
exactly during that state, I used the, the so-called cube frequencies, um, which David explained in the interview um, that we had to record because David couldn't be here today um, uh, uh, precisely. So it was the cube frequency. Maybe you can explain a little bit from your perspective what the cube frequencies are. Oh, the cube frequencies, David discovered that everything is really a cube, including us. Like, for example, he explained, like, if you, if you stretch your arms out, um, the arms is a cross. Well, if you open up a cube, it also forms a cross. And each of the elements in the pyramid, they too are cubes. And, um, the six days of creation, David believes also, um, is the unfolding of this cube. And so um, the frequencies that he's come up with, now I don't know the calculations, of course, but these, these, these cube frequencies are the building blocks, or God's building blocks, in a sense, is what he calls them. And so they're the primordial creation of, of, um, of life or of, of um, of, um, of, of matter, maybe, is a good word, too. I hope that helps. And, and maybe for those who have no idea, there are some of, of from my people here, um, that basically not totally an idea what we are here talking about. So basically the understanding is that energy and intelligence is the basic building block on, of our uh, creation and that energy and intelligence specifically the energy manifests in frequencies that can be measured in uh, Hertz for example and um, this knowledge of frequency medicine has been around for quite a while starting in 1936 with Professor Reifel who looked at uh, frequency medicine on the level of um, the physiology for example, that our liver functions at a particular frequency, our heart, and so on. There's another question, I think. Yes, yeah, so let me answer, let me talk a little bit about Rife too. Dr. Royal Raymond Rife was um, a scientist and actually an optrician in the 1930s. And he invented a microscope that could see moving cells. And then he realized certain sounds would affect the cells to move in certain positions. And in experimenting, he made a whole long list, so he made a, whole uh, a long list of, of how um, frequencies and sounds affected the cells. So, you know, and, and so we now have all these numerical frequencies that um, uh, translate to sound that you hear um, that will actually affect the cells in your body to heal you for different ailments and diseases. So another question, is there a sample of this cube frequency for us to check out on the website or anywhere online? Not at this time, um, um, Manny, there isn't. Um, however, we can talk offline a bit later. Um, what I would like is for somebody who else who owns the products to share their experiences and maybe for everyone to give a little bit of an introduction of who's here and um, what brings them here, whether they have the products or not have the products, if that's okay. Just to, so I can know who's here. So let's start with Steven Lascala. How are you? I'm driving right now. How are you, Sharose? I'm good. Yeah, right now I only have the book. I don't have the vortex bread. I'm waiting on the staffs and the um and the coil, star coil I yeah. purchased. So I'm just waiting on them. Right. Um and your experience um, with the devices to date. I, I just set up the frequencies. I've just been listening to the frequencies. The bed I haven't used yet, I'm reconstructing a room, but I, I just been listening to the frequencies by itself. So I haven't used the bed yet. So I I've, uh, I've I just listen to the frequencies and they very um, you know, nice soothing. Thank you, Stephen. How about you? Okay. Do you have comments and do you want to share a little bit about your experiences? If you're here.
Sorry, you said my name, Shiraz? Just hope, wondering if uh, you could share products you've worked with and your experiences as well. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm kind of a tech guy. Uh, um, in this life, I was a monk. I took up the, the monk uh, boat that was 1985. Yeah. So I have some background also uh, meditating. Um, currently, I do some what is called um, Sri Bridya practice, which is, um, is related to geometry, but this is a specific tradition. Unfortunately, teachers always encourage you not to talk privately about any teachings, but I can always talk about my experience. Um, related to technology itself, um, I have currently the, mant the mantra coil, the version with this uh, bead of lights, which I, am, I have never used. I only use the, the frequencies alone. You, you know, this version you, you release where you have one green, red, yep. and blue bean. Yes. I never use it. I always use the frequencies alone. I don't know why. Maybe I feel this something that maybe David was not sure to release. I believe the other David make it right. as a... But anyways, and my want, I think uh, I, I was first more um, fond of using the mantra. I feel it, um, it was very dramatic because the first week I was using the mantra I called, my, my body was vibrating all day long. Right. Even if I released the, the coil for, uh, for two, three days, I still feel the vibrations. Currently, it's more, this is very difficult for me to notice when I'm not using it because maybe my body is already attuned to the frequencies. The ones I use the most are, are because I believe you have to work them out for a while, are the infinities. Infinities, yeah. Um, Amazing experience. What I can tell you. I, I noticed a lot of changes in dreams, a uh, lot of different situations, unusual situations where uh, maybe I have, um, f I am facing ways of resolving of, uh, of a different angle of a uh, different situation being personal, uh, some uh, work problem or some unusual situations, social unusual situations, like someone releasing some of his abilities and not knowing myself or myself being in a contradictory position. It's very, very, very different. Uh, there is, there is no unique pattern in my dreams. So every day is different. Um, I'm still looking forward to for more, um, more, how to say, more orderly approach, because I believe I'm, what I'm doing right now. Well, to be truthful, I'm also a, a little bit quiet re regarding use of uh, rest of frequencies because I'm doing a practice. And this practice, as, as uh, maybe Thomas is, was, was saying, the mantras themselves have their own power, their, their own tuning. So if, if I mix them with a um, with mantra coil, um, I feel I'm not uh, enriching the, what I'm, I know with, with my experience. So once I finish this cycle of uh, teachings, in, um, which is 40 days, I, 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 I'm looking forward to, to go deeper in using the mantra coil and the ones. And of course, I will, I'm looking forward to go to the, to the staff of Moses, which I believe is the start of your product. My, my, uh, I'm happy, I'm happy, yes. I just wanted to say two things. One, the difference between the wand and the coil. The wand only has a range of three to six feet. So you won't experience it as, as, as expansively as you would a coil, which has a huge range you know, 30 feet, 40 feet, depending on which coil you get. And um, the wand, um, when you use it, you want it closer to your body for you to feel or experience the effects of it. You want it in your auric field, number one. Number two, when it comes to your mantras, actual vocal mantras, and mantra coil, now, I think it's beneficial to actually practice the mantra for 40 days without the coil. I agree with you. But I also feel that the mantra coil, when you work with your mantras, your vocal mantras, would enhance the effect. I don't believe they would clash in any way. But I feel that you experiencing it without the coil and then with the coil, you'll be able to see that difference. Tomas, do you want Yes, I'm sure of. I can, I can definitely confirm that because, like I said, I approached the whole technology fairly innocent. I was obviously meant to 
to play with it during the lockdown. Um, and I did, uh, like I said, I've been meditating for over 30 years. So I did my meditation usually um, on my own without any other support or any uh, any uh, um, device or frequencies. And then when I used the frequencies, it just accelerated. It was almost like opening up another vortex within the vortex to really um, accelerate the experience of expansiveness of consciousness. And it was a fast tracking the process from my perspective. And um, yeah, I, I can definitely confirm what you have just said. Um, I also want to, um, um, Miguel, um, we have been asking how long you've been using the coil for. Oh, this is my uh, seventh month after my purchase. Yes. So, um, um, when I'm away, I, I take my one. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, the last three months um, just just for the just for your uh, um, yes I understand the differences uh, definitely I, I never mostly most of the times when I before the, before going to sleep I like to play the infinite frequencies I, I mostly use it previous previous to to go to sleep because I think the, the effect is more um, noticeable or I think I enrich the content of my dreams. And I think it's not only the dreaming, I think my body works in a different level while you're having this dream because the situations create a different uh, circuits in, within your hemispheres and your body is learning something differently. Uh, so that's, that's the reason I do it just prior to, to going to sleep. Wonderful. So again, we come back again to, uh, to brainwave coherence in a way and um, uh, the infinite frequency is really, again, also I can, I can say that um, they support the body's own self-repair mechanism. And so do, for example, the pi frequencies, which really um, act on a very deep cellular level to support the body's own system to actually heal and repair. In fact, all of the frequencies do, but in particular, those frequencies when it comes to health and well-being, and being a health professional myself, using it in conjunction with any other approach, these two uh, frequencies really are, are very supportive and incredible. And maybe we can just uh, touch upon the so-called Stargate frequencies, which again um, is, is um, really been very very different experience in itself um, I just saw a question popping up yes um, so uh, pi and which was which other for health actually Andrew um, David Sarita frequencies um, to answer your question are, are holistic in nature so every one of those frequencies will actually help with your health it's not like one or the other it's just, you've got to think of it as a, in a holistic way where the right frequencies will say diabetes, cancer, arthritis. Uh, David Sarita frequencies will say frequency of the sun, will say the planetary frequencies, will say pi. And however, each of those has a, has a place that they affect in your physical body and expand out to your other emotional, mental, um, logical and causal and and above bodies astral um as well so when you're working with the david suita frequencies it's more of a holistic a holistic approach um i hope that answers your question thomas do you want to add to that oh uh, thank you yes um yeah basically because we are looking at changes on the level of consciousness so all those frequencies raise our vibration, change the, the frequencies of the most basic fundamental building block of creation, which is the essence of our physical body. And like you have said, I've, um, I, I can confirm and I have experienced that basically from my perspective, the pi frequencies, I could really feel um, we are looking at 
cellular receptiveness, cellular uh, repair and cellular receptiveness, particular with those frequencies. For me, at least this was my personal experience with it. Of course. And well, um, we, we talked about it earlier today about the planets and how each of the planets actually affect um, the different chakras in your body as well. And, and how the different planets are also associated, which is something David taught me, are associated with the different brain waves that, um, you know, alpha, beta, um, the te um, delta, theta, etc. Each of the planets have an effect on that. And I actually did a Q&A with David Sweden. If you, you can find it in the video section where I asked him some questions and he answered those answer those for me in that podcast or q a it's just audio with some slides but there's very many questions answered in that and i'd highly recommend anyone who uh, is interested in some of these answers like um, brain waves and, and planets and that to watch that um you're welcome andrew um who else do we have here daniel do you want to give a brief introduction if you don't mind I have Monica. Do you want to share a little bit about you? Um, probably fairly new to all this, but um, in terms of things, I only have his uh, music because my field for the past 30 years is sound healing. Right. And I've been working with all forms of frequencies. So I wanted to use David's music on my sound table when I work on people. Right. Um, and, and how? I'm still learning about your other technologies here. I work with other Tesla Miracoil technology here too. So, um, and I live close by you. I should come down and see you. I'm over at Halcyon Hot Springs here. Are you? Oh, cool. Oh, so David is in Nelson. Correct, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, okay. That's great. So it's good that I could come down and get Andrew is saying, yes, I tried cubes one, two, three, and four and got much deeper sleep. Okay, wonderful. Anyone else want to share? So I'm going to go back to our conversation with Thomas here. Um, Thomas, do you want to share a little bit about, um, I was actually talking to Shamim earlier, and she said like she now misses the coil that you've had for a while. Um, Andrew, Fibonacci made my mind very alert and active. Yeah, those are consistent with some of my experiences. The cube, I don't know if it makes me, gives me much deeper sleep. The cubes basically tend to um, expand me, I felt. But everyone's experience, I think, is different. Yes, and, and from my limited, um, uh, experience with the technology and the frequencies. I think also I have experienced the same frequencies in a different state um, of awareness differently. So for example, um, if I am very tired, if I'm really sort of stressed and tired, I can feel that the, the gentle lift, it's almost like a little lift that comes in and, and helps me getting into a more alert and more awake state. Right. Whereas when I'm actually already awake, when I'm already um, feeling quite good and then use the same frequencies, it's almost like it takes it to a deeper, um, or you use the word expansive, perhaps more an expansive state of awareness in the process. So it all depends also on how you feel physically and the awareness and sensitivity comes naturally as we clean our body because our body is the vessel for those frequencies. I mean, the frequencies will always resonate with our body, but are we actually perceiving them? That very much depends on the state of our physical level when it comes to toxins, for example, in the body. So as we cleanse and detoxify physically, we become more aware of those frequencies spiritually and energetically. Absolutely. 
Um, Andrew is saying at the desktop, no mic or camera. Sorry, everyone. So Andrew doesn't have a mic, so we can't talk to him. That's why he's texting with us. Um, Manny, how often is everyone using the technology in one day? Let me go first. Um, I use, I'm not using it every day, but when I was home, I used it every day. And I would actually wake up in the morning and intuitively decide which frequency I wanted to work with and then run that frequency. And I'd usually run it in, in uh, replay mode. Um, I'd have my wand beside me and my coil beside me, and especially in the beginning, because and I would experiment with each individual frequency just to be able to experience it fully, fully, rather than jumping from one frequency to another. So for example, when I first got it, I only used the frequency of the sun for a good week, so I could really, really experience it. And what I found by doing that was it sort of becomes part of you. And so even when you're not running the frequency, you can still feel it when you're out and about or doing whatever you want, or you intuitively think about that frequency. An aspect of that frequency definitely comes back to life in you. So um, that's my experience. Now, who else wants to share their experience with the, how often you use the devices and the frequency? Maybe just uh, from my perspective, I also use it on a daily basis. Yes. And similar to you, I play it on a, re uh, a replay mode. And even when I'm not at home, I let the frequencies run, particularly yes. the frequency of the sun and the frequency of the earth. My plants love. It's almost like they grow much faster, much bigger, more luscious. And even when I'm not at home, my plants benefit from the frequencies and my neighbors around me as well. So I do something good for the neighborhood as well. Absolutely. And if everyone has these, whether it's you're using them, but you're affecting your whole neighborhood. Um, sound of the sun makes me feel warmer, similar to how sitting in the sun warms you up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the sound of the sun uh, makes me feel energized. And yes, it does feel it does feel warm. You're right. It feels, um, it feels cozy, I guess is a good word. Daniel saying, um, I like the prime numbers. They, they, something. It takes you deep into a trance state. Thank you, Manny. Manny's saying, I love those shares from both of you. Interesting point about how it impacts our environment. Yeah, so when you have the coil, especially with the coil, um, the larger the coil, the larger the range, the, the frequency expands to. See, the wand is meant to be used with the body um, individually, as is the bed. Um, and it'll work within your auric, auric field. Whereas the coil will work all around you in a, in a larger field. The field is, is much larger. So not only are you affecting yourself, you're affecting others in your home and you're affecting your environment. So it's a protective means as well. Just by running your coil, you're actually, um, I don't, we don't like to use the word, um, you know, um, fighting or, 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 uh, fighting the negative um, frequencies like 5G and, and microwave and all that, but you're actually harmonizing with them to transform them into something that's more, that's, that's, um, that becomes good overall versus, or neutral overall versus anything negative. Um, has this been tested on more massive scale, like a concert, for example? Imagine how it can impact a peaceful protest. Now, I don't know about a concert, although I do know a client who's taken it into, um, um, he's done two things. He's, he's, our dis he's a distributor, I believe. Don't remember exactly where, but anyways, what he's done is he's got meditative groups that he gathers. And he'll go in and he'll have his coil and he'll play a certain frequency on it. And depending on the frequency he plays, people will comment to him about the, the effects they're having. 
And it turns out that every single um, person who comments has a consistent, um, consistent uh, statement to make about what they're experiencing. And then when you go back to the frequency that he used, he'd realize that, yeah, David says this is what will happen when, when you use this frequency. So it does affect on a, on a group level for sure. Um, uh, I guess not quite, you know, it depends. Well, when I think concert, I think thousands of people. I don't know if anyone has, although I do know someone who intends to. So we'll find out. Um, we also have, um, in Spain, we have a, a, a pop artist and he um, used, he started with a wand and he used the wand to um, heal his eyesight um, because he was a soccer player as well and his eyesight went and they wouldn't let him play soccer until he improved his eyesight. Well, he used the wand to heal his eyesight. Now he can play soccer again, but he's also a pop artist. He's actually, um, um, somebody who's attempted to embed the frequencies into his, his um, vocals uh, and in the background music. And he hasn't completed his project yet, but that will be interesting data too once we have that. Um, Andrew. Charles, may I just, may I just um, add to that briefly, I use it in particular for my quantum healing aspect of it. So um, basically what I do is I take a piece of genetic material, for example, a hair sample and place the image of the person and the hair sample on the mantra coil. So even somebody who sits uh, somewhere in the States or Australia or in Germany um, actually will benefit um, from the frequency, I mean, I have found that they actually benefit from the frequencies even when they are not in the immediate space. In particular, because when I do the energetic healing work, tune into the person and into that energetic field, of course, my attention and the consciousness, my own consciousness enhances then the, um, the, the impact it has on the person that has been worked on. And in this context, what I found very interesting is, for example, depending on what I use, if the person needs more energy, for example, using the sun frequencies, if they are weak or tired, and then they report after the healing, even without me being in direct contact with them during the healing, that they felt more energetic or they felt some activation of the pineal gland when I use the frequencies to activate the pineal gland or for example, they feel more grounded, more in their body, or um, um, yeah, so, so basically that's another way of using the technology and make an impact on the broader community, our own uh, families, friends, and people that we, we love and want to work with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Manny is saying, imagine how it can impact a peaceful protest. Absolutely. Um, I'm certain like, my, I'm certain, uh, oh, I can only speak on individual level because I've only really used it on individual level, but I certainly believe that how, working with the coil in my home when I have it in the home, it affected the whole, um, everyone in the home and it affected everyone on a positive level to, I believe it kept us from getting sick in this, in this tough time. And, um, I personally feel like, you know, um, I'm not going to get sick. Like I feel, I feel, I feel well, like I just feel energized and well, I'm not going to get sick. It's like an inner knowing that, you know, everything is better because you're working with the coils and it's a knowing it's not, it's not, um, something I think or, or something I imagine it's, it's a knowing it's like a deep knowing and it's very fascinating. Andrew is saying, our dog sat near the vortex bed while playing sound of the sun, and he started to pant the, pant the way he pants when he's in a hot car. Normally, he doesn't pant inside the house. And um, I was going to share just also, it reminded me of another customer of ours 
who used um, uses a wand and he's and his cat is always running around but when he uses a wand and sets it beside the cat um, she's calmer and she, it's like it's like she just wants to stay there so she's enjoying the experience of, of the wand um, so yes um, our pets are also affected by by the use of these frequencies um, we've also have clients who've told us where they've used the um, the wand for example to heal their pets of different tumors and and whatnot and and effectively been able to do that there may be an interesting collaboration with the global consciousness project a study through princeton thank you for those share shows thank you manny thank you for sharing that and i'd love to hear more uh, thomas do you have your remote clients listen to the frequency at the same time? That's a question for you, Thomas. Um, most of the time, 90% no, but some of the people I do face-to-face -face healings over Zoom, and then I play them um, over, so basically because they run and they, they listen to them at the same time while the healing happens. But 90% of them actually, they don't really heal it, hear it because I have no contact other than telling them, I want you to lie down in your bed, do certain breathing practice, and I, we will do the work on, on, uh, on you. And then um, they basically surrender the process. I can share my experience in that regard a little bit in that um, when I initially got the, the wand and the coil, as, as you know, I was experimenting and I initially worked with the frequencies listening to them, just listening to them. And then I worked with the frequencies listening to them and running them through the devices. And then I worked with the frequencies with just through the devices. And what I found was when I was listening to them and working with the devices, my attention was divided. So I was focusing on the sound rather than the feeling. And I felt like the, the, the experience is so much more enriching when you're feeling the frequencies versus listening to them that I, that I stopped listening to them and instead just focused on feeling and experiencing the frequencies. And the other thing I found was intent played a huge part. And that you, when you work with the devices, it's super important, at least I feel, or whether you're wearing David Sarita pendant even, um, I think it's really important to have an intent as to why you're wearing the device or why you're working with the frequencies, even on a daily basis, so that your intention amplifies into the frequency that you're working with um, to amplify its effects. This basically confirms the, the um, understanding that energy follows thoughts. So basically, wherever our thought goes, the energy goes. And in particular, with any of the frequencies and the devices, again, it will be amplified because of the um, purity also of the frequencies. Right, right. Um, you've only worked with the coil. You haven't worked with the wand or any of the other devices. You, have you or have you not experienced the staff, Thomas? I haven't. And actually, when uh, Dr. Dyer first introduced me to the technology, it was the staff of Moses that caught my attention and I felt intuitively I need one and I want one. But she's holding the staff very close to her heart. So she keeps, she's <laughs> keeping it at her home and she doesn't live that nearby. Um, it's just the technology that she has in the clinic that she was willing to share with me at this stage. <laughs> But I have had an experience of actually um, lying on the bed and also with the wand, but it was a very brief journey that I did just to experience it at her clinic. So I'll share my experience with the staff. It was the one I was most drawn to as well. And um, David Sarita had a partner at the time who they're no longer partners now, but um, finally, um, his partner brought the, the staff into, into the city and, I, and um, he just had a prototype and I asked if I could just hold it and 
Um, he's like, yeah. And so he hands it to me. And, and you, I don't know if you're familiar, I'm sure you are, of the, the, um, the Ten Commandments, the movie, um, that, that famous scene where, where Moses is wearing his robe and in one hand he has a staff and the other hand the tablets and, and the staff is raised high. Well, when he handed me the staff, it all by itself went up in the air and to the left. And then it, it stayed there. And this is without it being plugged in in any way whatsoever. It hasn't even been connected to any frequency device. And then I felt um, some kind of pouring down of energy into my arm and into my heart. And then it expanded and expanded. And then my hand automatically, all by itself again, goes back down to the ground. And at this stage, I hadn't really learned a lot about you know, why that would happen or what that, what that all was about. And I told David Sarita about it, and he was quite shocked, too, that that happened. And, but I learned later that when you place the staff to the ground, you're grounding, right? And um, so when you're grounding, um, or you're, you're receiving. When you raise it up in the air, you are sending Anyone else have any experiences with the staff that they want to share? Anybody? Are you here? Yeah, so anyways, that was my first experience. And every experience after that, well, then, of course, I sat with David Sweda, and he explained to me how to connect the frequency generator and what frequencies to work with and how to work with them. And I started working with them. And now, of course, we're... Uh, David Sarita has started a project where we're all running the same frequency every month. And that's been quite the most fascinating experience as well. Up to the point I was doing it, now I don't have all my devices with me. So I haven't been able to. But what I do is um, intent it. Just mentally intent it. And the, the expansion isn't as great, but it's still, you know, part of me that way. Anyone else have any questions, um, either for Tomas or myself? Yes, there is a question um, with regards, maybe you can have a look with regards to which mantra coils that people are using. So basically, I just used the uh, three uh, tier mantra coil, which I believe is, and I think it's the 14 inch three tier mantra coil. So I'm um, I had to return the device today to Dr. Daya and I have ordered my um, own mantra coil and I'm really looking forward to exploring again and keep using it because it has become such a stable part of my routine, daily routine and also my work yeah. that I don't really want to miss it. Yes. So we'll look after you. Uh, um, we're, we're intending to send you a seven tier uh, mantra coil. I believe Miguel has a seven tier mantra coil, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I no, there was not at that time. I, I bought the five layer coil. Five layer. With the bits of light. That's right. That's right. It was a five layer one. And then. Um, but you gave me a plus with the, with the beams, which, which, as I told you, I'm not very well acquainted because I, I rather use the frequencies absolutely. purely alone. Absolutely. Maybe later. Yes, absolutely. The the um, the lights with the with the that that came at that time was an initiative. Um, I believe David Sarita wasn't really involved in, um, but it shipped with the device regardless. Who else do I have here? Does anyone else want to share a staff or a coil experience? Danielle is asking, has anyone taken their staff outdoor for use? David has his staff outdoors. He has it right in the center of a holy of holy circle that he's created. And he's had some strange phenomena occur um, outdoors there. I actually uh, know of another client who, who um, sits with her staff outside to meditate and she's had some phenomenal experiences as well. Um, David, of course, if you, if you go online, um, 
there's videos there where David um, had his staff, I think, indoors, and um, in his property, some trees fell, and they were pointed directly at the staff. So, and, and that happened on, on very um, sacred days, like Christmas and Easter, too. It's fascinating. Any more questions, guys? Thomas, did you want to make that comment that I cut you off, unfortunately? Sorry about that. No, I was just, uh, I was just trying to point to the question because I, would, uh, I found the question very interesting to use it outdoors. Yes. So um, I think, yes. Yes, um, I was outdoors when, when that, I had that experience the staff raised all by itself. I was outdoors when that happened. I was in the parking lot of a chapter's store. So, but um, since I got my own staff, that happens to me um, wherever I am with my staff. It, it tends to take on a life of its own. May I ask what staff do you have, Shiros? I, I, of course, just have the level one staff. Um, um, the, the entry level one. Thank you. Yes, and David will tell you and I'll tell you that it's just as effective as some of these other staffs, but you and I both know that the metals um, with certain crystals can have enhancing effects. So, um, those who have the silver and the gold staffs have had some amazingly profound experiences with them. Anyone else have any questions here? We're coming up the hour here, so um, we'll take some last questions and then um, be great to get precise detail on how to construct a sacred circle indoor or outdoor like to make one in a bedroom. Ah, yeah, David's, David's when he, he's going to start his inner circle um, program again, starting in September. Um, it's not going to be very pricey. It's going to do $50 a month or uh, $500 for a year. And, um, and he wants to do projects like that that are more in depth um, that go into deeper concepts and subjects. So he's going to cover that in his inner circle more and more. So I would encourage you, Daniel, to, to join the inner circle as of September. I think Stephen's going to join um, for sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, any last questions here before we, we uh, call it a day? What I will promise you is I will upload the interview to YouTube and, and email everyone a link so you can uh, watch the interview with uh, David Sarita and Thomas yesterday because it's packed with information as they're going back and forth on a much more technical level than we're, we're having right now. And of course, we got David Sarita answering questions instead of me. So um, much, much more um, insight and detail into what David Sarita is giving uh, answers to Thomas. Um, and then I also interviewed Thomas this morning and uh, I'll post, I will, we won't, I guess, do a webinar next week of that interview. We'll have another discussion perhaps. And then I'll post that on YouTube as well. I remember David instructing on how to, but forgot. Look forward to hear David talk, talk about it again. Yes, he wants to. He's very much looking forward to it too. So um, join, the, join the inner circle in September. Thanks, Daniel. All right, mm -hmm. everyone, if there's no more questions. There's one, there's one more. There's, yes, there's one more question. Uh, with regards to the manufacturing of the products and where they are being shipped from? Sure. So um, in regards to the coil, um, it's right now there's uh, two people doing the work. 
for the smaller corals, um, uh, it's another person. And for the larger corals, it's right now David Sarita. So in, any, in the case of any of our products, you're looking at four to six weeks for delivery. Um, the product ship either from Canada or the US. And I know it's going to the UK, so the a, a, a shipping cost there. But we'll figure out what the best cost is. No, Thomas. Um, but yeah, you're looking at four to six weeks okay. because each product is handcrafted. I believe you make yours himself, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions, everyone? Going once, going twice. All right, well, thank you for joining one. I'm sorry we couldn't get that interview going properly for us, but I promise to upload it um, within the next couple of days so you'll all have access to it. And I'll email out a link to everyone so you can watch. And um, you as well, Thomas, so I'll, I'll send you a link. Thank you for being here today, Thomas. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you for being Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Cheryl. You're welcome, Steve. Thank you. You're welcome, Monica. Thank you, Miguel. Thank yeah, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It was nice meeting you, Manny. Thank you. Hey, boy, Cheryl Rose. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. And, and feel free to get in touch with me directly if you want to. Everyone. Okay. Number email is sales david sarita at gmail.com right now. And that'll go directly to me and CC David Sarita himself. So wonderful. Well, you have yourself a wonderful evening. Thank you, Cheryl. It's a pleasure meeting you, and I hope we talk again soon. All the best, everyone. Love and light. Never late. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.